I guess it's already time, so we can uh, begin with our session. Uh, so uh, before I could uh, uh, come uh, to the speaker, uh, I would just give a brief uh, introduction to you know why we are organizing this conference today. So I'm Elena Heisnam, and I welcome you, you, you all to the uh, uh, first uh, day of our conference, which is jointly organized by uh, Anova Miral, um, uh, Center for Research and Advocacy, Manipur, and uh, uh, Michelle Foundation. Uh, so this uh, particular conference is supported by um, uh, Mayan Unity and Decolonial Indigenous Memes. And uh, we are organizing this conference on the topic, uh, Implications of Oil Palm Pursuants in Northeast India. So the, the question of why uh, we are organizing this conference today um, is that uh, 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 given that um, uh, given the approval of uh, national mission on edible oil farms uh, by the union cabinet, uh, uh, especially which is you know uh, of special focus to uh, uh, north northeast region uh, of India and the Andamans and Nicobars, uh, we have realized how immensely it is important for us to you know discuss on this and uh, you know realize uh, so that. I mean, you know, um, just uh, to discuss on this and, you know, to uh, spread the information uh, to the public at large, you know, how uh, this particular uh, form of plantation is going to affect us, affect the land, affect the indigenous people, and also um, uh, the environment at large. So uh, considering how important it is that the uh, people be aware of this before it gets implemented, um, we are organizing this. So the main agenda for this uh, conference is to spread awareness to the people uh, upon you know the pros and cons uh, uh, regarding uh, oil palm plantation uh, in our land and also uh, how it's you know uh, really going to affect us and all that so um, uh, our speakers are you know uh, uh, from uh, uh, various states of uh, the northeast uh, india and uh, it's an every speaker will be given 20 to 30 minutes uh, uh, to speak on uh, the topic. So uh, without further delay, uh, I would like to welcome uh, our first speaker for this conference, uh, Jiten Yungnam uh, from Manipur. Um, he is a, a, a well-known uh, person, uh, a, human right, a human rights advocate and environment activist in Manipur. Also, uh, uh, he has written two books, um, namely uh, Dams and Indigenous People Rights in Manipur and uh, Development Aggressions. I would really, really recommend each and every one of you to read these books if you are someone uh, you know, who is interested in understanding the nexus of uh, development programs and how uh, it actually uh, you know, uh, uh, affects uh, or you know, the, uh, the right, human rights violations, especially um, uh, the, for the indigenous people. So, uh, also, uh, I would really uh, want uh, each and every one of you, I would encourage you to, you know, uh, raise questions, uh, any sort of questions that you, you know, that comes in your mind regarding oil palm plantation, so that our speakers here will address to it. Uh, so, without uh, further delay, I welcome our speaker, uh, uh, Jiten Yumnam, uh, to uh, kindly proceed with the program. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, and. Uh, uh, thank you very much, and thanks for inviting us for uh, to share uh, on this in initial session on uh, uh, implications of oil palm plantation uh, in northeast part of India. Thank you, for uh, and also thanks for the and thanks to all the organizers for uh, you know, for arranging this. Um, yeah, so let me begin uh, with the introduction to the national plan, uh, the national mission. Yes, uh, in August fifteen. Uh, this year, the government uh, of India announced, uh, you know, this national mission on edible oils uh, and oil palm uh, plan. Um, and, uh, you know, the focus area is in northeast part of India and uh, Andaman and Kobar. And if you look at the figure in northeast, uh, it's 3.28 3 uh, uh, hectares, uh, large hectares, no? which means like almost, um, it's a huge uh, tract of land to be acquired, to be uh, targeted in northeast part of India. And... Uh, and of course, ultimately, the purpose of uh, establishing this mission is uh, for India to ensure that it becomes self-reliant and edible oil production. So I mean, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's the primary purpose. No? But then uh, the national mission has already evoked a huge uh, and strong response, uh, including resistance from all over Northeast. Um, and then it's also good to look into the context uh, as to how uh, and why uh, 
uh, just oil, uh, you know, farm is pursued across the region. No? And also, just, it's good to, to reflect a little bit on the background as well. No? Because, um, the oil palm uh, pursuance is not new in, the, in India, for example. Uh, even in Northeast, it's not uh, that new. Uh, if you look at the India's program, there's a special program of, uh, on uh, expansion of oil palm area in the year 2011 and 12, uh, 2014 and 15. Uh, and then there's uh, earlier in 2014 also, there was this mission on, uh, national mission on oil seed and oil palm, you know, which, is, uh, which was under the 12 uh, five-year plan. So um, it was there. And then uh, even the National Food Security Mission, there was this mission in 2018. So there was a special focus on uh, oil palm as well. So it's good to look at, uh, you know, reflect a little bit on the brief background as well. And then if you look at the Northeast context, uh, Mizoram uh, it already initiated uh, oil palm uh, plantation way back in the year 2004. Uh, and, you know, and aggressively it pursued oil palm uh, plantation. And then if you look at the policy, it even passed a policy called the Mizoram Oil Palm Regulation of Production and Processing Act. You know, and, and today, um, 15 years down the line, uh, Mizoram had already more than nearly 30,000 hectares of land. Uh, you know, most, most of it is forest land under palm oil cultivation. So now, um, and then with the new mission, uh, and then many of the states are now uh, embarking on the pursuing aggressive pursuance of oil palm plantation. You know, and even in Manipur, um, there are several reports that there are settling and pursuance of uh, uh, testing in everywhere. And even Manipur, uh, it comes up with the oil palm mission. Uh, it was last year in August. But the actual policy uh, to promote oil palm come this, uh, this month itself, no? uh, till quite recently. And it's called the Manipur Oil Palm Regulation of Production and uh, Prospect. Uh, this is very much uh, in line with what Mizoram uh, had adopted. No? Um, and uh, yeah, and in the case of Manipur, uh, the government is uh, trying to implement uh, or pursue oil palm plantation in Sandel, in Jasampur, in Far West, Bishampuri, right? and several other districts. And uh, recently it announced a uh, acquisition of several tract land in, uh, in this Jiribab district uh, already. Uh, so yeah, so there is an aggressive push for oil palm all over Northeast. Uh, and then it's also good to reflect a little bit on the context again. You know, some of the context is why India is pushing uh, oil palm plantation all over the region. Um, you know, it, it's also important. Uh, one is, you know, there is this notion that uh, the indigenous peoples or the tribal peoples uh, traditional management of land or uh, you know, uh, agriculture practice is unsustainable, you know, so that's a perception and that's a premise, no? So in, in fact, if you look at the policy in Mizoram, the new land use policy was adopted uh, quite a long time back in 2011. In the case of Manipur, uh, in 2014, new land use uh, policy was uh, introduced, but it was, uh, you know, due to objection, it was, uh, it was, uh, it was, uh, you know, it was uh, withdrawn. But the basic premise of the this policy is the consideration of, uh, you know, the traditional agriculture pattern, zone cultivation or subsistence cultivation as unproductive, uneconomical, um, and, you know, environmental damage. So that's a premise, you know. So they wanted to promote uh, a more commercially viable, you know, uh, and, and which includes rubber plantation, palm oil, you know, and th that's how Mizoram um, pursue oil palm plantation. And this new land use policy of 2011 in Mizoram, it's, it's what that uh, facilitate the pursuance of, uh, of uh, palm oil in, uh, in, in Mizoram. And then also if we, yeah, and then another compulsion for India, uh, besides the need for, uh, you know, uh, ensuring self-reliance uh, in oil production, Apart from that is also the climate change factor, because I think this is a very strong factor that we all need to consider also, no? because India comes up with this commitment, uh, this international, uh, uh, nationally defined um, uh, commitment, no? uh, nationally defined contribution. This is more of India's uh, international commitment to reduce climate change um, uh, emission of uh, greenhouse gas. No? And, and accordingly, the Ministry of Environment and Forest and Climate Change, you know, if you see the you know, Ministry of Environment and Forest, it, 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 it tries to link strongly the climate change mitigation and adaptation with the increasing the forest cover no? uh, as part of uh, fulfilling India's uh, commitment to the uh, UN, UNFCC, United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, no? as part of fulfilling the Paris obligation. So what they consider is they wanted to create more green areas. No? Uh, so which means trying to create more, uh, more green areas beyond the forest. Uh, so that's, that's the notion of, um, you know, and, 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 and by, you know, by covering or by greening with trees, uh, whatever trees, no? and, and then, um, and also, it's also good to reflect on the, 
the national forest policy uh, and also the recent revision of the indian forest policy in 2019 so all these policies it promote the commercial management of forest so there is a redefinition of forest so forest in the traditional sense it's a very biodiverse and very diverse and unique you know full of flora and fauna uh, fauna species you know but now it defines forest as something anything with trees which is green but doesn't have to be diverse no so you know which which, which means there is a new category of forest uh, definition with with uh, makes it um, the commercial uh, mono cultivation or even the commercial plantation as you know as as consideration of forest so i think this new definition under the indian forest act of 2019 uh, the draft forest policy of 2019 and now there is a new new effort to dilute the forest conservation act of 1918 uh, and um, yeah and then it's also good to look into the national action plan uh, on climate change now there is this green india mission green manipur mission i think because there is a correlation to that now i think it's also good to reflect on this as well how india is trying to fulfill this climate change uh, obligations uh, under unfcc and how it relates to the oil palm plantation uh, yeah so that's also the context that i wanted to mention a little bit no? and uh, if you look at the adverse implications of palm oil uh, plantations in northeast i think it's, it's it's really good to reflect uh, remind ourselves how diverse how unique is our own biodiversity you know and manipur and also uh, the entire region of northeast we are right in the middle of two uh, global biodiversity hotspot uh, region one is uh, indo myanmar indo burma biodiversity hotspot and also the uh, eastern himalaya biodiversity hotspot so which means it defines the uniqueness of our biodiversity and the flora fauna and also like for example in manipur how many orchids we have we have more than 400 varieties of orchid in sikkim how it's just a small set how many orchids sikkim have it has more than 500 orchids So one of the most diverse one of the most densest uh, concentration of uh, unique flora and fauna so i think it's really important that we remind ourselves you no know, of this and then in fact many of the new fish species are still being discovered you no know? many of the new medicinal plants are still being discovered so which means the depository of the flora fauna the species is still uh, ongoing you know it's still incomplete so um yeah so which means it so it, it it's really important to to define uh, the uniqueness of our own heritage national heritage right? and how it linked to the survival of our people how it linked to the culture of our own people how it linked to the indigenous culture and tradition and way of life i think it's really important and if there is palm oil cultivation over 3. Point, you know uh over 3.28 lakh uh like you know over an extensive um, uh, uh, landscape all over northeast you know it will entail massive destruction of our forest it will entail massive destruction of our flora fauna it will uh, you know it will hasten the loss of um, our uh, faunal and by uh, endemic species in the region no? and and what and most importantly it will add an additional pressure to the land in northeast because northeast we already had very big problem with large dam construction we already had problem with mining we already have problem with oil exploration you know several large scale displacement happening left and right you know? and if you add the infrastructure and mining and minerals and whatever and if you add the oil palm plantation you know and 3.28 lakh uh, diversion of those areas i think it will uh, add extremely huge pressure on the people's land and resources and which which ultimately will impact on the livelihood of the uh, different communities uh, in the region and i as i also mentioned uh, the the pursuance of oil palm plantation will lead to the destruction of forests cutting down felling of our forests no the conversion of our own existing forests into uh, palm oil which is a mono cultivation you know so ultimately this will impact on our uh, endemic flora and fauna not just in manipur but even all all across northeast no um, i think that is one of the biggest concern uh, and it will also affect the indigenous the traditional livelihood pattern it will affect the way how the indigenous people the tribal communities or even the different communities in the region how people relate to the land and the resources you know the traditional management of land the traditional agricultural practices uh, you know the traditional way of uh, manage, uh, food production system i think it will completely uh, severe those kind of relationships and with that it will hamper uh, significant impact on our uh, traditions and even our traditional uh, uh like for example uh we will lose how many uh, how many communities will uh, tribal communities will will lose our own uh, food species for example you know, rice variety for example uh, you know so i think that is what we also need to consider no the loss of uh, loss of uh, like food uh, another major impact is the environmental contamination because the oil palm plantation uh, 
uh, he used extremely uh, high concentration of pesticide and herbicide and you know all kind of pesticides and uh, all kind of chemicals you know, to sustain the uh, the high yielding uh, you know sustain the growth and also the uh, production of uh, the oil palm. Uh, and that will contaminate not just the land, not just the soil, but even the air, even the water, even the groundwater, you know, and it causes huge devastation in terms of the chemical contamination. And this is one of the biggest uh, impact, no? And with the destruction and the contamination of land and soil, and with the destruction of forest, it will also impact on the water source. Because forest, as you know, with the forest, we have rivers, and because of the forest and because of the, uh, you know, uh, uh, Northeast, uh, the, you know, still 70, more than seventy percent of the Northeast is still covered with forest. And if you destroy the forest, ultimately it will impact on the water source. You know? so our rivers, our springs will dry up or reduce uh, flow. And and that flow, whatever remaining flow, will also be contaminated with all the chemicals uh, used in the palm oil. And I think this is a reality which is already seen not just in Mizoram but even in Southeast Asian countries, you know, Malaysia, Indonesia, and and there are thousands and thousands of reports uh, that confirm how oil palm plantation in an extensive scale. Uh, unleash uh, massive devastation all around, not just on the people, but on, on, on the environment, on the culture, on tradition. I also wanted to highlight the cultural impact, no? because when we lose our forest, when we lose our source of our uh, food, of our livelihood, of our culture, I think uh, the palm oil persuasions, uh, one of the biggest impacts is on the culture, you know? because a lot of us, for example, our handloom and handicraft, for example, or craft industry, for example, a lot of it, a lot of the materials are sourced from the forest, like cane, like bamboo, like wood, like so many other items, you no? Know? And even resin, the simple. Uh, you know? And if you don't have forest, you cannot pursue, We cannot pursue our own culture or tradition, no? Because and then the, the very culture of the youths, of women, and even the children going to the forest and collecting the seasonal, um, you know, produces from forests. And I think that itself is part of the culture, you know, part of the way of life of many business uh, cultures, you no? Know? And and uh, we have seen that in Borneo, for example, where because of the loss of forest, the young people, the women, the children, they can no longer to, uh, go to the forest. No? And forest is like a university in one way. You can learn, you can learn uh, the different types of species. You can learn the ways of surviving in forests. You can, you know, you can, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a huge learning process within the forest. No? Uh, traditional knowledge, um, you know, knowledge about medicine, knowledge about traditional medicine, knowledge about flowers, knowledge about birds. You know, there are so many things that you, we can learn from the forest. No? So once we once we uh, destroy a forest, once our forest is lost, then we cannot learn our own traditional uh, culture. You know? So the relationship with our forest uh, uh, and also the cultural relationship will be severe, will be uh, impacted. No? Um, and also, it's also important to look into how the palm oil business, uh, the pursuance of palm oil business, how the corporates will control and monopolize the entire this thing, you know, and once the corporates um, control, uh, you know, control people's land resources and, you know, through the oil palm plantation, how that control will impact on the people's life and people's way of life and also the people and also the environment itself, you no? Know? And uh, there are so many cases, the oil uh, corporatization of land, how, you know, for the sake of concentration of profit and consolidation of wealth by the corporate bodies, how it uh, undermines the survival and also the rights of different communities. I think this is one of the biggest uh, concerns. And how once uh, the corporate control the market of oil palm production, you know, then they can, can control the people. No? So the, in the initial phase, they will encourage people to cultivate palm oil with the government. You know? But once there is a massive uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, cultivation of palm oil all around, the palm oil pl uh, plantation all around, then... Uh, the corporation they will play around with the market no? so they will try to exploit the um, the ones growing palm oil for example they will you know they will pay uh, whatever cost they throw away price you know? so which means um, they will control the market so that they will pay less uh, and extremely low cost to the uh, you know to the to the farmers or whoever's cultivating so this this great uh, this ultimately lead to massive impoverishment of different communities no? on the on the first place people will lose the land to this uh, corporate bodies uh, and they will abandon their sustainable traditional agriculture, and they are they will be compelled to plant uh, or or grow palm oil. And at the end of the day, they cannot sell at high price now. So which means they will be, you know, they they don't they don't have any way to sell uh, those uh, whatever uh, is grown. So I think this is one of the fundamental problem, the problem with the market, uh, market control by the corporates. I think this is a basic problem which is already seen in nearby Mizoram. I think one of the biggest problems with Mizoram is uh, how companies like Godres, uh, uh, Agrobat, uh, how it controls the market, no? and how uh, with that control, how it exploits 
the farmers and uh, many of the indigenous tribes in Mizoram. I think this is one of the fundamental problems because they don't have anywhere to sell you know, once they uh, uh, cultivate. And uh, they cannot revert back to their own traditional agriculture also you know, because the land is contaminated and there are so many other issues as well. The source of water and... Uh, yeah, so this is one of the issues. Another very important uh, area which we need to talk is the human rights violation. How uh, the both in the process of pursuance and also after the pursuance, you know, in the subsequent process, how the corporate bodies in with the with 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 the next with the government um, and you know law enforcement agencies, how they control and how they commit human rights violation. And one of the worst form of human rights violation is land grabbing. How it forcibly uh, acquire people's land and resources without their consent. No, I think this is a fundamental problem. If you look at Indonesia, many of the indigenous tribes, like the Dayak, the Ivan, for example, one of the fundamental problems is with, uh, with, uh, you know, with the violation of community rights, no? uh, failing to take the people's consent. And even in Mizoram, there are several cases of uh, violating uh, the community rights. Uh, yeah, so I think this is one area that we really, really need to look into, no? And then, of course, there is also always a dimension of gender impact, no? Because traditionally, if you look at the way how uh, indigenous people relate to land and uh, and pursue um, indigenous agriculture, uh, women plays a very, very important role, no? uh, not just in in the um, uh, sowing and harvesting, but also in the distribution of uh, of the agriculture producers, no? and also the seasonal uh, food collected from the forest, and all. so it, it, the women plays a very important role. And with the palm oil cultivation, the traditional role of women will be completely distorted or will be changed. No women, uh, and in the case of Mizoram, there are several studies that um, that that uh, that uh, confirm that women are delegated into a very different role, though, um, vis a vis agriculture, and you know. Um, yeah, I think this is uh, also something that we really need to consider, you know. And then, of course, there are so many other problems, you no know? issues, problem of land, problem of uh, conflict and tension within the communities, uh, and then also the with that contamination, uh, which I was uh, referring earlier, contamination of air, soil, water, how it impacts on health, for example, you know, health of children, health of women, health of uh, youths, health of the community, you know, not just the physical health. When you talk about health, when you when people lose the land, when people lose their livelihood source, how it affect the mental health. How it uh, how it unleashes uh, psychological impact on the community itself. No, of um, you know, people used to be um, self-sustained before. Uh, doesn't have to depend so much on the government, for example. But then, once people lose the land, once the land is uh, uh, forcibly taken over, and once the livelihood is destroyed, then ultimately people cannot uh, survive. You know, it's it's difficult, and so then it unleashes a very different uh, you know health impact uh, in, in so many. Uh, Form, no, and I think this is something that we also need to appreciate. And then, of course, the conflict dimension, like you know, northeast, many part of northeast is still afflicted with conflict, uh, multi multiple layers of conflict, no? conflict within the community, among the community, with the state, and how the pursuance of palm oil can how it complicate the nature of conflict within the region. I think this is also one area uh, which we also need to look into, no, like in, in place like Manipur, no. And then the, the additional issue can also be issues around corruption, uh, manipulation, and then, you know, uh, the politician, you know, those are areas that we also need to look into. Yeah, so in conclusion, um, I would say that uh, the pursuance of this palm oil is, um, is, is, is uh, it's, it needs a very serious rethinking, or serious rethinking, because the question is whether this initiative, is it for the people of this region? Or is it something to fulfill the needs and uh, ambition of uh, certain others? No? So, for example, when the Prime Minister of India defines, uh, introduced this national mission in uh, August, it says that, okay, the, it wants to fulfill, India wants to fulfill uh, its mission to be self-reliant in oil palm, oil, uh, edible oil production. But the qu question is, is it the goal of Manipur? Is it the goal of uh, Northeast, uh, you know, other states? Um, and I think this is what, uh, and what is, the pri what is our priority? You know? And then, there is when this area is a target uh, for Northeast uh, to plan, you know, three point, uh, nearly three point three uh, lakh hectares. Uh, do they consult with the people here, you know, uh, or is it the need of the people here? And I think those are also related to the procedural areas, no? Procedural lapses of procedural areas. For example, the lack of consultation of the different communities here. I think this is one of the biggest problems. So that's why there's been serious um, objection to that process, no? Like coming from Mekalaya, from Manipur, and you know, many, many parts of the Northeast, there's already very strong racism. And, and, and the reason is because of the lack of consultation. And then another area, uh, which is also related to uh, 
related is the lack of detailed impact assessment because there has been no impact assessment no? because it seems the government has failed to appreciate or, uh, or even to understand what has happened before in Mizoram, not just in Mizoram, but even in other places like in uh, Andhra Pradesh and in nearby places like uh, Malaysia, Indonesia. Malaysia, Indonesia, yeah, it's, you know, we often cite this because it's a, it's a perfect example of how oil palm has unleashed so much of devastation and destruction all around no? with the unaccountability of the corporations who are there. So I think those uh, are another reality, you know, and then uh, the lack of accountability mechanism to corporate bodies and also the government. I think this is something that we also need to seriously consider. Um, yeah, so finally, I would say that we need to conduct a little bit more research uh, on, you know, trying to understand how this oil palm will impact on the people here, you know, and then, of course, we have seen what happened in Mizoram, but we still need to look into a deeper, a deeper level and uh, we, our as I said, no, because this arm oil palm will only complicate what has been problematic here. No? We had already enough of problem, like with the last time, with oil, with extracted mine. These are simultaneously pursued aggressively, you know, with oil palm. And we, we also need to consider the holistic, uh, the cumulative impact, you know, not just on oil palm. We also need to see what is happening in the right, what is happening with the river, what is happening with our forest, what is happening with our land, uh, and the different, uh, different, different, uh, different, different, uh, projects and policies which are pursued left and right. No? Uh, yeah, and then of course the youths, uh, women and uh, other sectors of uh, the community really need to take a very strong respo uh, strong role in trying to understand and also to mobilize uh, community and then of course we all need to strive for a more sustainable development process uh, that is respectful of the community's right of world and resources and also that fulfills the need and risk of the different indigenous communities all over the countries. Yeah, with that, I would like to thank you once again and thanks for all the guests and listening. Thank you very much. Um, uh, thank you for uh, such uh, valuable knowledge to us. So uh, we have uh, very few questions uh, which I would like you to address. Uh, so one question, I think it's just one question. So the colonial is means, uh, does um, demonization of traditional indigenous cultivation practices by the government relate to oil palm, uh, 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 oil palm cultivation pr uh, propagation. So basically, he, uh, I think uh, it's asking about uh, whether, you know, the uh, tradition, uh, how uh, the way the government is uh, portraying uh, the traditional mode of cultivation, for example, you know, uh, Zoom cultivation, den uh, denouncing, you know, how it is polluting the environment and all that. Uh, I think he's referring to that. Okay, so uh, so what exactly is the question again, or uh, is the question that, asking me to uh, clarify yeah. a little bit on that? Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Uh, yes, uh, I, I will. Okay. Uh, have you got the respond? question? Hmm. Shall I respond, or uh, shall we take other question also, or is it? Should I respond first? Uh, I'm so sorry. I uh, I'm not. Uh, I mean, uh, you are not audible to me. Uh, can you please repeat it? Uh, should I respond to the question now? Or? Yeah, kindly, uh, kindly respond. Uh, yeah, to the question. Mm. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Mm. All right. Uh, yes, uh, I was referring to the new land use policy uh, of Mizoram uh, 2011 and also the new land use policy of Manipur in 2014. Uh, these are policies uh, introduced uh, to facilitate uh, the cultivation of uh, the pursuance of oil palm or mono, other monocultivations like rubber, um, rubber and then uh, tea, coffee, and now it's also including palm oil. And if you see the uh, in Mizoram, uh, the pursuance of uh, oil palm in Mizoram, it relies uh, heavily on, you know, among other policies, but on this policy, new land use policy of 2011. Uh, and in Manipur, there's a very strong resistance to this policy, 2014 new land use policy. And the premise is because this policy, it um, it uh, it comes up with a perception, uh, you know, it denounced the traditional land management or, uh, or traditional uh, agriculture pattern like system cultivation or zoom cultivation. It, uh, this policy uh, defined zoom cultivation or system cultivation as unsustainable, as unproductive, as uneconomical, as destructive to the environment, uh, as far as I remember. So I think that definition, that premise setting is something which is... Uh, 
problematic. And, and that's also one of the reasons why many of the communities here, uh, it, uh, it comes up with a, uh, with opposition to the uh, project. Yeah. And, 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 and also the alternative given by this policy, it says that, okay, uh, by defining the traditional indigenous agriculture pattern as unsustainable and productive, it then pushes for uh, things like oil palm or rubber plantation or uh, you know, uh, tea and coffee cultivation as a solution, as commercially viable, you say, you know, uh, and I think that's where it's, mm -hmm. it's problematic. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure that the Manipur government, uh, it, of course, it passed this policy uh, you know, on oil palm uh, just recently along with the mission, the Manipur mission uh, last year. But maybe the government of Manipur is also thinking of reviving the 2014 uh, oil palm, uh, you know, the new land use policy. So, you know, one wonders, uh, one, uh, you know, uh, maybe the government might introduce, reintroduce again, you know, because, uh, because it seems the government is uh, following from Mizoram. If you see the, um, the new policy on oil, uh, on oil palm, it's very much uh, what's been adopted in Mizoram before. In four. So uh, there is, if anyone asked, uh, would like to ask any more questions? Uh, I think uh, uh, there is one question that I would like, uh, 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 you know, you to clarify on. So um, uh, regarding uh, the idea of uh, Westland, so what actually, uh, you know, is mean by Westland and uh, how, you know, the... Uh, uh, I mean, uh, say for example, uh, um, uh, in Manipur, uh, when we talk about uh, this um, uh, oil palm uh, cultivation, uh, uh, the government uh, somehow is saying that um, you know it is not uh, going to uh, you know cut down the forest or you know it's not good, but it is going to you know uh, do all those cultivations on the wastelands. So uh, regarding you know uh, the concept, the idea of you know what constitute wasteland, uh, could you please you know like clarify on it, like. Uh, yes, uh, the government uh, the government tries to define wasteland. Yes, it says that it will plant oil palm uh, in degraded areas and wasteland areas. No, that's uh, that's that's uh, uh, how government project that. No, but then if you look at the areas in Manipur, whether in the hills or in the valley, um, I, I think there is no no there is no wasteland in a way. No, because every land has its own purpose. No, the community has its own purpose. Say, for example. Uh, there may be areas which, uh, which is a forest and people may use it, but then there may be areas which is like, you know, for, for example, no? but it may be used as a grazing ground or it may be used as a community space. No? And so uh, the concept of Westland is what um, uh, the government defines, uh, you know, uh, without, without considering how people at the local level, at the community level use the land, because people have different ways of using the land. And there is no concept of, uh, uh, you know, Westland. Um, but uh, but but what one of the one of the another concept because if you see the response of the government because today also the government of Nepal try to clarify you know try to allay uh, the concerns on oil palm you know, and one and one of the clarification from the government uh, it says that oil palm will be cultivated in um, zone areas and degraded in degraded areas no which you know which is like wasteland in a way no but then uh, but uh, but but in that definition they also say that uh, they will plan in Zoom land areas again coming back to the very uh, definition that I said. Uh, we said it will they will plant this in zoom areas, but uh, with that with that uh, response, it seems to undermine the fact that uh, undermine the the traditional uh, agriculture pattern. Mm -hmm. Also, for example, in zoom land areas uh, in the system cultivation, for example, uh, it's not a permanent uh, cultivation. You know? So, for example, certain communities they will plant. Particular uh, conduct the agriculture practice this year in one particular portion of the village, and later on they will you know shift to another you know. But in that process, they also have this traditional uh, traditional process of managing the forest, you no? Know? Because they don't completely cut down the forest, um, you know, they cut it in the stem, and many of these trees are fast growing trees, you no? Know? So which means uh, uh, after they complete the agriculture, so in the next uh, one or two years, you no? Know, so the forest will regenerate. You know? So which means uh, a lot of the agriculture pattern it allow. The traditional forest to re to regenerate and flourish uh, again, no? uh, and I think this is a fact. Is uh, the the ones promoting the oil palm plantation, you know, particularly the government, ignore this reality. You know? So for them, zoom cultivation is bad, is unproductive, and sustainable, and it's uh, part of part of uh, defining as degraded in uh, what do you call it? wasteland. Yeah. So I think th th there's a difference of difference uh, in the notion and perception of land. 
Thank you. Uh, uh, there is also one question. Um, uh, I will read it out. Um, okay. Uh, so the, uh, uh, please elaborate on the implications of the oil palm cultivation policy on tribal land rights. Yeah. Uh, yes. The, as I said, no. The uh, the the the, the purchase of oil palm will have a direct impact on the on the tribal uh, management of land uh, because, uh, as I said, uh, the purchase of uh, oil palm plantation, the entire premise is with the notion that uh, the tribal management of land is unsustainable, unproductive, and as I said earlier, no? and that is what is happening in Mizoram. So um, one of the biggest impact in Mizoram uh, is already because of the implementation of the new the new policy, people have already given up the land uh, for oil palm plantation. So and then already they have seen the impact of um, oil palm, you know. And there are, as I said earlier, as I discussed earlier, there is a problem with the market. Uh, there is a problem with the contamination. There is a problem with drying up of water, you know, because water sources. Because uh, you know. You know, once you cultivate, once you convert the entire forest into palm oil, so one of the biggest impact is on water. Water, one is contamination of water. Another one is drying up of spring, you know, water springs. And I think without water spring, you cannot, you cannot carry out any agricultural practice. And I think this is a problem, another problem, we, which we already see in Mizoram, uh, water scarcity in the hill areas. No? So contamination and also the shortage. Um, and uh, with the water shortage, uh, you cannot even cultivate uh, palm oil also, you know, because, because of the shortage of water, where will, we, where will you source water, you know? So, and in fact, it will impact, water shortage will also impact directly on the uh, um, uh, oil palm cultivation itself. So I think mm -hmm. it's, it's really, really important that we look into the impact uh, of um, the oil palm pursuance in Mizoram. No? And in fact, it also changed the way how uh, indigenous peoples or the tribal people relate with the land, you know, because earlier it's a community management of land with a, a role and responsibility of women. And, uh, but now I think that relationship has changed. Um, and uh, yeah, and there is this increased, per, increased perception of the, what you call the commercial uh, perspective of land. I think this is fast uh, unfolding in Mizoram. So, yeah. um, and the community ownership and complete community management of land is, is uh, it's, uh, is undermined. Um, I think uh, uh, the question on, uh, there is also another question which says, how cultivation of oil palm will affect the soil and water of a particular area? I think that's quite answered uh, with you know, the explanation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, there is yeah, I also think it's one. already it's already covered. Yes. Mm. Uh -huh. So uh, I think uh, there is also one more question by um, uh, Gaurav uh, Talukdar. So how the water availability in Manipur, as we have seen a water crisis in many oil uh, palm oil palm cultivated areas in Mizoram, what would be the possible possibility of water crisis in Manipur to this plantation in long run? Yeah. Uh, yes, I think that's a good uh, question. Uh, yes, I think that will that that is or uh, that will be a uh, severe impact in Manipur because even without the palm oil, we already see water crisis all around. No? Because if you see, uh, we we now we are seeing a water water crisis a bit to a level where we see big rivers like Impal River drying up in certain certain part of the year. No, um, Iril River drying up, and why is drying up? Because the catchment area of these rivers are, you know, the logging activities and also the uh, what's called the, the deforestation rate in the catchment areas in, uh, in in Manipur, you know, in major rivers Manipur. It's it's uh, proceeding, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, what do you call uh, progressing at an alarming rate. We it, it, we already feel that. No? But if you add oil palm to that, uh, in the pretext of uh, the, pursuing this uh, kind of uh, economic activity in uh, so-called degraded areas. No? It will uh, contribute in further uh, worsening the water crisis in Manipur. And I think mm. that, 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 that will be a serious uh, problem. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think uh, it's uh, the time's already up and there is no more questions to be addressed. So, mm. uh, yeah, I think... Uh, uh, I will. Uh, we will be. We will now move on to the uh, second speaker. So thank you, um, um, uh, Jiten Yunam, for this 
uh, session. Mm. Uh, thank you for uh, giving us your valuable time to, you know, like uh, talk about these mm. important issues. Thank you so much. Thank you, and thanks for all the questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.